is the Ruckus Guitars RS Tribute. And this is going to be a really exciting video for me to make because for the first time a brand had reached out and was interested in having me kind of debut one of their new products. So Jason, the owner and designer of Ruckus Guitars, he was looking to get some playing samples and also some thoughts from myself and anyone else that's watching this video. If you're watching this relatively recently after it's been uploaded, you're going to be one of the first people to hear about Ruckus Guitars. He's looking for thoughts on what you would ideally change in a guitar in this price range. This is the RS Tribute, it's the baseline guitar model of their brand, and it's they're hoping to have it retail for something like $200, and the basis of this entire instrument is that it's a guitar made to be upgraded. It's got great bones in it, and it really resonates, I'll talk about that later. Uh, the electronics, they didn't really put too much money into the electronics, they mostly wanted to focus on the build quality and just overall creating an instrument that's worthy of someone if you're a hot router looking to dump some money into upgrades and come out with a guitar that can compete with something in the $800, $1,000 price range. So the purpose of this video is kind of going to be to take a look at this instrument and consider what the process might be if, if you're looking to design a new instrument. Like I said, Ruckus Guitar is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where they're designed. Uh, the instruments are built and fulfilled over in East Asia somewhere. They're shipped back overseas to the States where Jason can give them a once over. And you know, you, in this process, you kind of go back and forth with the manufacturer and you decide what works, what doesn't work until eventually you come to a product that is ready to be sold to them and, and put on the market. So as we go through this video, I'd love to hear from you if you have any suggestions. Um, let's start with the specs of this guitar, and before I go on, I should mention that this video is probably going to come across as me being really critical of the instrument, uh, but really, it's a prototype, like I said, so the, the point is to be picky. We're going to look at some of the areas that can be improved and hopefully figure out the best possible combination of all the parts here. So, talking about the specs of the instrument, it's a mahogany body and a maple neck. It's really light. It's a, I would say it's around like 7 pounds. It's a little bit lighter than my PRS, which is a chambered instrument. This guitar is not chambered though, besides the obvious uh, chambering that's in the back plate here. And you can tell that it's kind of modeled after Stratocaster design. It's got a similar Stratocaster bridge. Uh, it's just got one volume and tone though. Uh, the pickup configuration is a unique one that we haven't really seen too often. It's got a P90 in the bridge, which could be swapped out for a mini humbucker if you accounted for how you would mount it. And two single coils in the middle and the neck position. Five-way switch. Uh, and that's that's generally the basis of this thing. So let's listen to it. take a quick look at the neck and the headstock of the guitar, um, I can tell you that it's a C-shaped neck, it's a satin finish on the back, uh, which is one thing that I think is a really nice feature. I've never been a fan of the glossiness here. This is my PRS McCarty, um, and I love everything about it except for the back of the neck. I've never really liked that glossy finish. Uh, so for me, having a smooth satin finish on the back of the neck is really nice. Looking at the headstock, uh, we've got a three and three, so three on each side design here. With the Ruckus guitars, there is no angle to the back here. It's straight like a Fender would be, but looking from the nut to the tuners, you can see that the strings are mostly in a straight line. That's a really great design uh, because it means you're going to have more tuning stability and the strings are less likely to get caught in the nut of the guitar as you're doing bends or, or playing with the vibrato arm. <laughs> Thank you. 
Moving on to one of the most important pieces of the puzzle, uh, as far as guitar design goes, in my opinion anyway, and that's just the fact that this guitar resonates really well. That might be a part of the thin satin finish of the body here, uh, but one of the things that I found and that I can you know, testify for, when you go to a guitar store, pick a guitar up off the wall, you tune it, you sit down with it, before you even plug it in, you can tell if it's going to be a good instrument or not. You know, just play a couple open chords. If you can feel the instrument resonate in your hands, it's probably going to sound good through an amp. If the guitar does not resonate like this strap does behind me, I'm not a fan of that guitar, it's never going to sound good. There's no amount of expensive pickups, strings, cables, pedals, or guitar amps that can fix that. Uh, if the guitar itself does not resonate well, it's not going to sound good. It's just a dead guitar. And I think the finish of the instrument on the body specifically has a, a lot to do with that. So years ago, when I was picking this up, I think I got this uh, in New Jersey somewhere. Summit, New Jersey, that's where the short store was. It was called like Guitars and Jazz. This is an Eastman AR810. And actually this is a prototype as well. It's a thin, like violin style varnish on this guitar. So it's very thin, it does check and, and dent easily. You can see some marks on it. I've only had it a few years. Uh, but when I was looking to buy this guitar, I tried it out with another guitar, exact same model, same year, it just had a, a thicker polyurethane finish on it. And honestly, this one just blew it out of the water. Again, same exact guitar, just a different finish on it. And this one sounded so much better, and this is why I bought it. Um, so, so I'm glad to see a price point guitar that does not have a really thick finish on it. If you don't like the satin look here, or the feel of it, or you don't like seeing the actual wood grain, of course, this is a guitar meant to be upgraded, and you can always change that. speak about the very minute details of this instrument, uh, we've got 21 frets, the radius, or the width I should say, of the nut here at the neck, at the end of the neck, that's 41 on this guitar, but the production models are going to have 43 millimeters. Um, it used to have a string tree, I found that the string tree wasn't worth anything, it was kind of adding some, some tuning issues, so I just took the string tree off, I don't think we're going to have a string tree or holes in the headstock on the final production model. Um, that was something that Jason was, was shaky on to begin with. The pickups are very well balanced. P90 has a little bit higher output than the single coils, as is to be expected, but they sound great together, particularly in position two here. We've got a unique sound with the P90 and the middle pickup. Um, and again, they're, they're not like amazing sounding pickups for $200 and a $200 instrument. I'm glad that they had focused on the build quality of the instrument rather than the electronics which can be easily replaced if you're someone that wants to modify the guitar. The fret ends, I should say, uh, feel very smooth and that's impressive for a guitar in this price range. One thing I also might mention that might be worth replacing or upgrading is just the nut. It's definitely a cheaper plastic nut and when I got it, it wasn't really cut correctly. We had to kind of uh, make, make some adjustments there so that the strings actually sit inside of the nut. We've got inlays on the front and also on the top of the neck. And I think that just about wraps everything up. If you have a question, you can leave it in the comments for me. Uh, and I would love to hear your opinion on the design of this guitar and what you might change yourself. So let's look at the negatives of this prototype guitar now. What is going to need to be fixed before this guitar runs into production? <laughs> This guitar did come with a string tree, uh, which I found to be kind of creating some tuning issues, so I just took it off, and that was a suggestion Jason had as well. It sounded like he wasn't very set on it, and it might have been something that the manufacturer pushed for for some reason, uh, but I don't think the final product is going to come with a string tree, so that's good that we got rid of that. The weirdest thing that I found when I got this guitar was that the angle of the output jack here was actually too high, so it was coming out at too much of a vertical angle out of the body, and I found this when I had a straight jack plugged in here to the top of the guitar and I was trying to screw in 
the vibrato arm. You know, it has trouble passing over the top of that. Uh, so if you're someone that likes to play with the vibrato arm back here and then pull it around when you're going to use it, that'll definitely get in the way. Uh, this is something that'll be changed as well, I think, when we move on to the final production model of this instrument, is that we're just going to have to find a different angle output jack. instrument here they came very stiff so the claw was screwed all the way back to the the top of the cavity and we had I think it was all three springs in there that were just set really tightly and it was pulling the bridge back too hard against the top of the instrument which made it impossible to use the vibrato function of this bridge uh, so in the future I would like to see that it just came from the manufacturer with a more reasonable um, set setup I think and again, the setup is something that you can change easily for yourself, but I think it is nice when it comes already pretty close. The saddles here were definitely pretty close to being in tune uh, and intonated properly. In the past when I've gotten guitars, they just show up completely flat and you have to set it up from scratch, which can be a, kind of a pain in the butt. It was nice that these were close and you can tell that they had actually done a little bit of that work beforehand. As I explored the electronics in this guitar, I found that the, the potentiometers here are very tough feeling, like they, they don't spin very easily. So that could just be a matter of changing uh, some, some form of the tension in the potentiometer if that's possible, or just replacing them with a higher quality part. Additionally, the tone control seemed to not do much of anything at all in the first 50%, and then as I turned it further, all of a sudden it hit a point where it just dropped off the tone completely, and then the last like 50% of the knob didn't do anything either. And that just, it might be a fact that I got a guitar with a bad potentiometer in it, or maybe we need a different value uh, capacitor in it, or, or, or whatever. The switch on the top of the instrument feels very tight. I would like to see this a little bit easier to move in the future uh, for a production guitar. Something else that I noticed when I, when I got this was that the six screws here on the top were not quite screwed in the whole way. So it kind of created... Um, an anomaly where when I used the vibrato arm, the bridge not only shifted like this, but it also shifted front and back, or I should say side to side on the instrument. Um, and that was odd, so I had to tighten those down a little bit, um, but it seems to work fine now that I've done that. Now as I adjusted those screws and I screwed them in a little bit further into the body, I noticed, because I had the cover off on the back here, that the screws ended up poking through the bottom of the guitar, the back cavity, and as I adjusted the height of the P90, I lowered it a little bit. I found that the, the screws were actually poking through, uh, the P90 mounting screws were actually poking through the back here too, and that's just a matter of picking out like smaller screws, I think. You've heard plenty of talking from me, you've heard a little bit of the playing samples of this guitar already, but what I want to do right now is just run through and give you a very basic test of the neck, the position 4 sounds, position 3, position 2, and finally the bridge, position 1. And so hopefully I can share with you how the pickups sound. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So in summation, I would like to thank Jason and Ruckus Guitars for sending this out. Keep in mind that they sent me the guitar in exchange for the review, uh, but they wanted my honest thoughts and feedback on it, and they, they want your honest thoughts and feedback on it as well. Please leave a comment, let me know. Uh, to wrap this up, I just have to say that I think this is a really cool idea. For $200, you get a guitar that's got a very good set of bones on it. We've got a nice satin and resonant body and neck. And at $200, you've saved a lot of money, and you can, you know, really upgrade the parts and create a guitar that's customized to your own playing style and what you want to do. You know, if you're going to compare this guitar with upgrades to something that might cost $800, like a Fender Mexican Strat or the Deluxe Mexican Strat or something, I think you're going to end up with a better guitar here and a more personalized guitar if you want with the Ruckus and some of your own choice upgrades. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hit the like and the subscription button if you enjoyed this video. And there's going to be lots more playing samples with the Ruckus RS Tribute in the future. So stay tuned to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.